Hi hey guys, Zagrin here. Here's a troubleshooting video about using my clip adapters for the FlashCat USB export. So first off, you'll want to check your solder joints on your clip adapter. Make sure they're all nice and shiny to ensure that they're making a uh, good connection. And then I would clean with isopropyl alcohol the legs of the NAND, of course, but also the cable itself, and then these connectors, just to make sure that there's nothing in there that uh, could be causing a connection problem. And you'll want to make sure that there's nothing on the the inside of your clip either that could be causing connection issues. So then connect it all together. Make sure everything's nice and snug. All right, so now I'm gonna try connecting it to this NAND on this PS3, of course with the circles matching up on each. So I have it on there, and of course the flash cut's set to 3.3 volts because this is a 3.3 volt NAND, and I'm going to connect it, now I'm going to apply pressure to it, and you see that light goes off. So in this case, what happens is that the board needs more current than the export can provide. And then because of that, the, the microcontroller on the export doesn't have enough power, and so it turns off and can't make a connection to your computer anymore. So we have to connect an external power supply in order to read and write to the flash on this. So You'll just need a, you know, multimeter, set it to continuity, check. And an easy way to, f well, you need to find the power pins on the NAND itself. You can search up the data sheet so you know which pins there are or where the pins are. But oftentimes there are capacitors right next to the power pins. So that way they uh, have a clean supply of power. So you can usually probe off of the capacitor itself to uh, figure out where other power points are that you can uh, solder wires to. So in this case, it's pretty easy to tell where, like, this is obviously, you know, ground over here. So you can probe and see, that's ground. So then you just need to find another point nearby, like that. In this case, I moved it over a bit, but so you solder wires to that to connect to some kind of external power supply and, you know, find a positive, got some points over there. In this case, I put it right there. So you want to solder the wires as close as possible to the flash. You don't want them like over on the other side of the board. And so once you do that, you'll want to disconnect that to use an external power source. If you're using uh, just a regular external power supply, you would connect it to these pins down here. But of course, I have my power supply adapter, so I'll use that instead. And just pop it on top. And then use the jumper. Make sure it's set to 3.3 volts. And then we'll try to connect it again. 
So connect the power supply. Then connect the flash kit to the computer. See now when we press down on it, it's totally fine. So power problems are usually the first thing I go for because they're kind of the easiest thing to fix. Um, even though a lot of the times it's just connections with the clip itself. But if you get the power stuff out of the way, then you can focus on that. All right, so now we have the power stuff sorted out. So we're gonna open up the FlashCat USB software. Make sure that you're on the parallel flash mode and go over to the console and we're gonna start trying to recognize it. So you wanna try to apply pressure to it and You can try to like replace it and wiggle it around. You know, hit F1. See, it's detected now. And you can look at the flash chip ID here. So a lot of times what'll happen is it'll say it'll detect a flash, but that it's not in the library and if you've already looked it up and made sure that the flash is supported, um, you can check out the chip ID since it's the flash cat is receiving data from the NAND, but it isn't actually the ID. So usually that's some connection problem. And as you move the clip around or apply pressure to it, you can see how that number changes. Obviously, if it keeps changing as you're doing things, it's obviously affecting it. Um, and then if it doesn't change and you keep changing things, then that means something else is wrong. So you should try to figure, you know, try something else instead. And then obviously, you know, you don't want to hold it like that. So you want to make sure that this is all stable and then you can put something heavy on top of it to hold it in place or you can tape it down if that works. So also if the chip ID keeps changing and you're not doing anything it could either mean like there's an unstable connection or it's possible that something else on the board is trying to access the flash at the same time since so now that you're applying power to it it could be powering something else on the board. So then there's bus contention there. So in that case, you'll have to figure out, you know, what chip is doing that. And then if there's a way to put that into that chip into like a reset state or a try state. So that way it's no longer trying to access the flash and then you'd be able to read the flash. So in this case, that doesn't happen on like these PS3 um, boards that have the NAND flashes, but the ones that have the NOR flashes, uh, that does happen to them. So you have to tie um, a point on the board to ground to uh, try state out the south bridge in, in that case. So that's another thing to keep in mind as a potential problem. So some other things you can do if you're still having problems is double check the input voltage and output voltage of your power supply. So you want as close to five volts um, for the five volt input on this one. It should work down to like 4.5, but the closer to five volts, uh, it is, it, you know, is better. If it's not at 5 volts, um, you can try a different micro USB cable or a different uh, USB charger 
I recommend like a two amp charger. Um, even if it is at five volts, um, you can change those out if you're having problems just in case. And then you want to measure the output. So in this case, we want 3.3 volts and we're getting 3.289. So close enough. You, you know, you want it to be within reason. And if that doesn't solve it, you can move on to doing continuity checks on a, the adapter itself. So you can check like that the cable itself is good. But then you can also check, you know, between a point on the board and the cable to make sure that there's a connect clean connection there. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it to the pins on the clip itself. That's how I've messed up a bunch of my clips. So, sorry ahead of time, my microscope isn't super great, but wanted to go over some things with the clip itself. So, as you can see, I've trimmed the clip on the sides a little bit, which a lot of times, you know, flashes will have capacitors or resistors right next to them. So you may need to trim your, or, you know, shave the sides of the clips a little bit to make sure that they sit completely flush and don't hit on those. Another thing is with the 360 clip, a lot of, you know, it's missing a lot of pins. And so you want to make sure that there's nothing like in the holes where the pins would be, because that will still, you know, cause it to not sit uh, flush on the flash. And the pins themselves, if you need to, you can push them out, you know, with tweezers or a needle or something to try to make it uh, make a better connection. So I'll put flash in there. I don't know if you can see very well, but like this left side the pins will line up much better than on this right side. And I don't know if you'll, you can see like when I'm pressing it down, it has like that little bit of resistance, you know, that's making, that's the pins making the contact with each other. You zoom in really close. I'll try to keep this steady. I don't know. But you can... <laughs> Sorry, it's really hard to see. But you can see that, you know, the... Some of the pins go into those recesses and the, the other ones are still pushed up by the pins in the clip that are making contact. So this mostly applies to the 360 clip because all the other clips have uh, all the pins, but you can still see how that contact is made. And so part of the reason the clips can have a hard time making contact is that you know, the flashes themselves, 
you know, their legs are gonna, can be slightly different lengths or, you know, bent at a slightly different angle because the clips make contact right here for the most part. And so if, you know, they're not all exactly the same, you'll have to push down farther um, in certain parts to make, you know, better contact. And then on the clip itself, it's the same thing. Not all the pins are going to be exactly perfect. And with something like this where, you know, it needs to be pretty precise, uh, just that like little bit of variation can cause problems. You can kind of see that the splash on the left is slightly bigger than the one on the right in that its pins extend just a little bit farther out. So the, you know, the size of the flashes themselves will vary a little bit. So that's another thing that can be a problem. You know, you have a clip that's slightly too big or slightly too small. Um, that can have problems with making a good connection. So these are all uh, different things that you'll have to keep in mind when you're trying to uh, get them to work. Um, another thing that can happen, I guess this probably would be better to show on a board itself, but these corner pins will usually have bigger pads on the PCB and so they can have more uh, solder on them and those can actually prevent the clip from making good contact as well because the clip doesn't have like an oversized opening for those corners so um, in that case you can take some like solder wick and try to wick off some of that solder from those legs. Um, I haven't run into that problem, but it's something I thought of. So yeah, hopefully some <laughs> of this was useful. Uh, again, you can check out my website where I have a troubleshooting guide, which pretty much just has all of this stuff in it. Um, you can also message me on Riot uh, to chat with me if you need help. You can also go to the blackcatusb.net forums, post there if you need help. And of course you can email me 